Hello, this is Richard Parson for the Parson Report, ag-financial.com, and this is a climate update. We're going to keep this one brief compared to normal. Uh, we're not going to take a look at the global warming and super cycle stuff, although I'll, I'll try to uh, squeeze in a, uh, just a comment at the, at the end. This is a monthly chart of our Chicago Precipitation Index. And all we're doing is that if it's above normal, we're adding it to the index. If it's below normal, uh, we subtract it from the index. And we can see we've had a wetter trend so far in 2013. It's even taken out highs uh, in the past few years here. So we've retraced the drought. And if anything, it's uh, now too wet. It's just too, uh, it's risen too fast, too high, too soon, that kind of thing. And it's due for an L1 top, cycle top. In July, now it can delay all the way to September, which would mean it's just going to be a wet summer all the way into fall and maybe a wet, sloggy, uh, soggy <laughs> harvest. So, uh, and that also brings, opens the door for even an early frost and, and the corn didn't uh, properly mature in time because uh, the wetness and, and decent summer temperature just keeps it growing longer than it should. So we could still wind up with some more problems and it's been a while since we've had late growing season and harvest time problems and this may be the year that it's going to occur. Same time, however, if it were to peak in July and not peak much higher than this, meaning it starts starts to dry out during July, then by August, when an L1 bottom is due for precipitation in the Chicago area, uh, you could very well have it too dry. And so the crop would suddenly get clipped at the end, and you could still have an early frost. I suppose if you even snap back and have a wet harvest, that would really confuse things a bit and shake things up. So we'll see how this all works out. But uh, yes, now we have to start thinking of an end to this uh, wet trend, but for the moment, in terms of technical definition or status or, st or, stat or statistics in terms of trend following, the trend is still up. It's still uh, wet and it's still more than normal precipitation. Now, this is a chart, also Chicago, uh, an index I created, and uh, it's actually of Chicago temperature. And this is kind of reflective of at least some of the Corn Belt, maybe the core Corn Belt. And we can see that we've, yes, global warming's been working. I can extend this chart going back several years, and this chart just keeps marching higher and higher, and the model's done some a great job of forecasting when temperature would return to normal, and the chart would just move sideways, and then all of a sudden the model would say, time for warmer temperatures again. And so we've been running above normal for a considerable amount of time. Uh, on the super cycle thing, we are due for a little setback, I'll explain in a moment maybe. But let's just take a look at the, what we see for this trend is that we really have a chance for a three-year cycle, meaning it will not get warmer for the rest of this year. But that's really uh, probably the second opportunity for a long-term top. Uh, indeed, it could be warmer than normal for, for the rest of the, the summer growing season. And as far as that three-year cycle creating any cool temperatures, it could wait towards the end of this year on into next year uh, to cool things off. And, and <laughs> when we say cool, on the super cycle uh, trend, it's probably only going to ease back a little and still remain somewhat above normal. So there's every bit of the chance that with this L1 bottom, we're going to see a spike up for July. So we could see July warm and wet, but it might not be so wet. And by looking out to August, we can actually see warm and dry. There's a setup for it. And so until this temperature turns down more than it has and, and you show me something cooler for a whole month, I'm assuming we got hotter temps coming for this summer. I don't think it's going to be as hot as whatever the record high was in the last one to three years here, but I think we're still going to remain well above normal uh, for a hot summer. Now, this is for something in my own backyard. This is actually a Lando, Florida temperature. Uh, actually, this chart is precipitation. And same story, it actually put a long-term bottom in for precipitation, and we haven't had hurricanes yet, but look at this spike up. And the interesting thing is for the month of July, uh, Orlando normally has the same precipitation as Chicago. That's kind of fascinating. But also interesting how Florida has been dry for quite some time. In fact, this run-up in 2004-2005 was strictly hurricanes. If we take an eraser and just wipe that out, we're actually in a downtrend uh, since uh, the 1990s that Florida has actually been in a drier trend. But at any rate, it is time for a three-year cycle up move, and we're looking for a top. And who knows how high it's going to go, but it doesn't have to top for quite some time. So I think we're having going to have uh, one of the more humid, uh, wetter summers that we've seen in several years here. 
uh, and we could use it to replenish uh, not only the soils but our water tables and uh, it may remain wet on the wet till early next year before we pull it back. I realize most of you could care less about Florida in terms of uh, where we're going for crop production and where's the economy going relative to the, that uh, relative climate. This is Florida Orlando temperature with three year cycles and we think the trend is warmer into next year uh, for this three year cycle. So global warming is still working. Um, and last winter, really, we weren't so cold. We had one of the nicer uh, winters in a while. And I wonder if we won't have a second one in a row for this winter. Might be a nice time to visit Florida uh, for this next winter. At any rate, uh, how about the super cycles? And the answer is that uh, we're in a 1,000 to 100,000 year cycles that are trending higher all the way to 2030s and probably can throw in 100 year cycles and something in between and, and all the way down to a few decades. So basically, global warming's here to the 2030s. As you break it down, uh, we are due now on into the end of the decade to maybe even early next decade for some corrections, kind of slow down the global warming, maybe even pull it back. So I wouldn't bet surprised we're going to see some record cold and record winters here uh, over the next few years and people saying, see, global warming uh, doesn't work, it uh, was fantasy, and all it really is is a correction. And then later on, you're just going to get even hotter. And so uh, be very cautious of the anti-global warming. It's, it's been real for, for some time. The only argument is whether man caused it or not and whether we can do anything about it or not. And I'm not going to use this video to debate that. I have my own personal uh, ideas on that. But uh, there's no question about it. Uh, we have global warming. But uh, in my opinion, we're going to see some corrections here in the next few years. And if you read the research of Raymond Wheeler, who made forecasts back in 1950s for climate to make an impact on our politics around 1980 and around 2000, what comes to mind? Uh, President Reagan, President Bush, 9-11, uh, uh, you just it's just fascinating. And his, um, by the year 1980, someone wrote a book and said he was 65 to 85% accurate on the stock market business, uh, politics, religion, economies, and all in relation to weather and, and, and that accurate in weather. At any rate, uh, even Raymond Wheeler was saying by 2015, it was time to have a, uh, a correction against that global warming. But even his research was based on global warming into uh, the 2030s, maybe I think even allowed the 2040s. I'm using the 2030s. Very interesting uh, research if you get a chance to, to check it out. At any rate, uh, I would say the 27-year cycle that I've shown in these videos in past months here is live and well. Yes, it struck with a hot drought last year, and so it's probably all over, but I say that cycle is not going to recover well enough uh, and a combination of temperature, temperature and precipitation to create glorious crops this year. If anything, it's kind of gone from one volatility to another volatility, or I should say from one extreme to the other, uh, that we've gone from hot and dry now to uh, cold and wet. Now it's going to be probably warm and wet, basically too wet. We've gone from a drought last year to floods this year. Interesting times, and it has something to do with that 27-year cycle tucked inside a global warming cycle. Thank you.